I am so fortunate to have my full-time job being teaching Final Cut Pro. Because of that, people might assume I know everything about this program, but that is so far from the truth. So in this video, I'm gonna show you 10 things that I recently learned in Final Cut Pro. I have this text on the screen and I wanna animate it coming into place. So one way I might do that is go to my video inspector, find the position parameter, click to add a keyframe, move forward a little bit, click to add another keyframe. Let's go back to that first keyframe and slide it off the screen. So if I push play, now it slides into place. And that's all well and good, but there's a much easier way to animate inside of Final Cut Pro, and that is by using the slide transition. To get to it, just go on over to your transitions, scroll on down until you find movements, and then you can scroll a little bit further and you'll see slide. I'll go ahead and apply this onto my title, and if we push play, by default, it's sliding into place. We can also select that transition, park our playhead over it, and you'll see that we have these on-screen controls so I can adjust the direction that this slide is happening. You'll also notice that it's giving us some nice motion blur, which is super handy. So we can now have this sliding from the top right-hand corner. Now, if we wanna have it slide out, you'll notice that the animation's a little bit weird, but we can easily fix that by selecting our transition and changing it from slide in over to slide out. So we have it sliding into position and we of course have it sliding out. This next tip comes from Soundwise in the comments. Something I am constantly needing to do is to extend out a musical element using some reverb so that the visuals better match with the music. Before, I was using gap clips and compound clips and it just got super messy, but there is a much simpler way. Find the moment in the music that you want to extend out. I'll do it right before this big musical hit. He can Parking our playhead there, go ahead and select your clip, then push Shift H. This is going to apply what's called a hold frame, and you can extend this out as long as you possibly need it to be, or you could shorten it down quite a bit. Now that we've done that, go on over to your effects, look up the cathedral effect, and apply that onto your music. Take your playhead back just a few frames, and we'll set the amount to zero, we'll click to add a keyframe, and we can expand that up as much as we would like. And if you take a look at the waveforms, you'll notice how they've been extended out. Going to the end of that point where we want the music to actually kick back in, we'll click to add one more keyframe, move forward another frame or so, and drop that back down to zero. So if we push play, it should sound something like this. That's weak and this next tip comes from the OGs of teaching Final Cut Pro, and that is from Ripple Training. This might seem simple to some, but to me, it blew my mind when I finally discovered it was possible. You'll see here that I have all of these different selections on my clips made up in the browser. But what if there are multiple parts of a video that I want to have selected? That way I can just quickly click and drag each selection down on the timeline. Well, after you've made your initial selection with I and O, you can go further into the video clip, then pushing and holding command, click and drag, and you'll notice that that has now made a secondary selection on the same clip. So you can use this to very quickly edit through your videos just up here in the browser before it ever even gets down to the timeline. This next tip I learned from Ryan Nangle in one of his incredible tutorial videos. A frustration I always had with using the Ken Burns tool is that I didn't have control over what kind of easing was applied, but it turns out you actually do have control over that. To get there, all you need to do is click on this down arrow to get to your crop tool, or you can push shift C. From there, let's go ahead and select our Ken Burns tool, and you'll see that we have the red box and the green box. The red box is of course the end of the clip, the green box is the start of the clip, and then all the space in between is how it is going to animate. Now by default, the easing is set to ease in, ease out, which is usually the preferred type of animation, but if you want a constant type of easing, you can actually just right click on your Ken Burns and change it over to linear. You'll also notice that you have power to change it to just ease in or just ease out. This next tip comes from the better Dylan in the Final Cut world, Dylan John Dickerson. He is an amazing colorist inside of Final Cut Pro and has a super extensive course that you can check out. I'll have a link to that down below. But something I never knew and totally blew my mind when I found out is if I were to push Command 6 to get my color wheels, I'll just go ahead and make a bad color grade but you'll see that I have in my color wheels the shape mask tool. Let's go ahead and add a shape mask and I could place this wherever I want. But what's super cool about this is we can actually go to our shape mask, double click on it and change the name. So we can just call it vignette. 
And if we added another shape mask, maybe a color mask, we can go ahead and select the mountains. We could rename that to be mountains. And so we can very clearly and easily see what our different masks are doing without needing to click on them to find out. Now, that does beg the question, why can't we go to our video inspector and do the exact same thing with all of the coloring effects that we've applied onto our clips? Let's just hope that that is applied in an update someday soon. The next tip on the slit. Just a second. Hello? We are calling about your extended car warranty. Extended car warranty? And we stole your identity. My identity's been stolen. <laughs> if only I was using Aura, the sponsor of today's video. But in all seriousness, I typically only talk about brands that sell Final Cut Pro related items, but I really feel like Aura is extremely important to our everyday lives. I recently got an email from a random website telling me they were featuring my videos on their page, and it kind of piqued my interest, so I checked it out. And to my horror, my personal phone number was at the bottom of the website for anybody to call. I didn't give any sort of consent to this website, I'm not even sure where they found that information, and so it got me quickly Googling to see what kind of information was out there about me. And I quickly found dozens of websites that had my personal address, my phone numbers, even the people I was related to all out there online. And it was later that I found out the reason for this is because of data brokers. <laughs> data brokers sell our personal information to both spammers and scammers and pretty much anybody else who may want to target us. And that's why I started using Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura shows me which data brokers are selling and then it automatically submits an opt-out request for me. Cleaning up my information is a great way to protect me from hackers who might use my personal information to get access to my social media and bank accounts and any other sensitive information I might want to protect. And as an added benefit which I'm most excited about is that it helps reduce the amount of spam calls I receive on a near daily basis. Aura sounds like the worst. With Aura, I get access to VPNs, password management, parental controls, identity theft insurance, and even more without having to download several apps. It's super easy to set up, and best of all, it comes at one affordable price. So for anyone else who is tired or worried about getting their information exposed online, maybe give Aura a try. You can start out with a two week free trial by going to aura.com slash Dylan Bates or follow the link down in the description. Protect both yourself and your online presence with Aura. This next tip comes from my friend Eric Lentz who is an up and coming Final Cut Pro YouTuber and he is doing a stellar job. Highly recommend you go give him a subscribe. When you're working with your different color tools in Final Cut Pro, you might feel like you don't have a ton of fine control over these adjustments. Maybe we wanna kinda push this over to the oranges but we feel like we're making too broad of an adjustment. Well, there's two different ways you can get really fine control. One way to fine tune your adjustments is to push and hold option as you click and drag on these color wheels and you'll notice that the adjustments are much finer. But something I didn't know is you can actually just click on one of these different handle controls, say for example in the shadows, and you can use the arrow keys to push up or push to the left, to the right, to make extremely fine adjustments on the screen. Additionally, we could go to the exposure and I'll just push down and you'll notice how that's slowly adding in more and more contrast on my video or we can go to the highlights and add a lot more contrast in this area. The next thing I recently learned comes from a YouTube comment from a username that I'm not even going to try and say. Now, if you're like me, you might need to constantly add keyframes at the very end of the clip. This is a pretty simple process just by pushing the down arrow and then pushing left to get back to that original clip. But this viewer pointed out that you could instead push shift O and that will actually take you to the very last frame of whatever is selected. Now you might be thinking to yourself, that's a little bit more more complex than just pushing the down arrow and left, but because this is an action in Final Cut Pro, we can set this as a custom keyboard shortcut. To do that, you'll just go to Final Cut Pro, go to Command Sets, select Customize, make sure that you have duplicated your current set or you just use one that you use regularly. And in the top right corner, if you search up Go To Range, you'll see that we have go to range start and go to range end. We could select a down arrow and just go ahead and click and drag go to range end to the no modifier. 
Then clicking on the up arrow, we could change that to go to range start. And just like that, we've gone ahead and adjusted this keyboard shortcut. That way we can push up or down and that will jump us to the end of the shot right at the very last frame rather than needing to push back on the arrows. This next tip came from Dan over on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it. If you have missing media inside your timeline, it can be kind of difficult to track it down. But it turns out you can actually just go on over to your index and type in missing and it will show up here just like so. Additionally, if you had missing titles or effects or different plugins that were missing, those same things would also show up here inside of your index. And you can also search for those elements up here in your browser by doing the same thing, just looking up for missing. The next thing I recently learned was from Ryan Wellborn, who is the amazing creator of Ad Motion. Let's say I wanted to animate these two different titles at the exact same time. Well, one way to do that might be to go up to my titles go into my adjustment layers and apply an adjustment layer here on the end. I'll go ahead and apply something like add motion, which I'll have a link to down below. And we can just drag that onto the adjustment layer. But you'll notice that because this is an adjustment layer, all of the layers underneath are also being affected, not just the text layers. One really great way to get around this is I'm going to duplicate this video element to the very top above the adjustment layer. And I'll go ahead and move this text clip down onto the main timeline. And now that this video element is above everything, we can go on over to our video inspector, go to the blend modes and change it from normal all the way down to behind. What that means is these text layers are going to receive that animation from the adjustment layer, but they will not be applied onto the video clip that is above everything. Now this isn't going to solve all of your Final Cut Pro problems, but this is a really handy tip to have in your back pocket just in case. And finally, the last thing I recently learned inside of Final Cut Pro is that you can have a favorites folder inside of your effects. For example, let's say I want to make my split screen effect from my new Pro Vertical plugin a favorite. To do this, all you need to do is apply the effect onto any clip, it doesn't really matter. Then we'll go on over and press this Save Effects Preset button. Once you're in here, you'll notice we have this Categories. I can go ahead and click on that and scroll to the very bottom and create a new category. Then you can label this whatever you like. And what I recommend is you add an emoji. You can get to your emoji keyboard by pushing Control, Command, and Space. Now that you're in here, we can go ahead and just add a confetti and we'll just call it favorites and push create. Now the reason I recommend you add an emoji is because alphabetically this is going to place it at the very top of the stack. From there, go ahead and push option and click on the checkbox of the effect that you want to save. After that, go ahead and rename it to whatever you like. We could literally just call it the same thing and we'll push save. So now anytime I want to access this, I can jump inside of my favorites folder and we'll see the split screen double vertical is there ready to be used. If this video is helpful to you, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and you might want to check out this video where I show you this brand new plugin I released called Pro Vertical for Final Cut Pro. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.